the sea, which sometimes when we're on it, seems to have no end, and which scientists tell us is miles deep in places. You'd think sea creatures would have plenty of room to move about in the ocean, but actually there are quite a lot of traffic problems underwater. What they seem to need is some sort of one-way system so as to avoid hold-ups like this. Of course, you must remember, there's a good deal of very slow-moving traffic too. And this fellow would find it terribly difficult to obey the slogan, step off with the left foot first. Some creatures that glide about the sea floor don't seem themselves quite certain which way they are going. But the orange comb star pulls himself firmly over the sand. If he sees someone coming that he doesn't like, he just sinks into the ground. It's such a useful trick. Just watch him do it once again. Don't you sometimes wish you could do the same? The masked crab avoids unpleasant acquaintances in a similar way. His long feelers reaching through the sand like a periscope tell him what's going on above. And when the danger's passed, up he comes again. The gurnard usually walks about the bottom of the sea on spidery legs. But if he finds the ground too crowded for comfortable exercise, he can swim. The cuttlefish treads water with the frilly fin that runs round its middle. It can, however, draw in water through its breathing valves and eject it suddenly through an exhaust, thus shooting off backwards. The crawfish is the most careful walker of the sea. He treads delicately and meanders nervously about the sea floor. while his cousin, the lobster, is very clumsy in a heavy coat of armor and blunders in and out among the rocks. Both lobsters and crawfish can snap their tails and skim backwards and upwards into safety when they wish. This trick would sometimes be a useful accomplishment for land pedestrians, on bypass roads, for instance. Prawns and shrimps have instantaneous reverses and can shoot about in all directions. Crabs will walk sideways and often run into trouble. But hermit crabs scuttle about all over the place in other creatures' cast-off shells, looking like owner-drivers in baby cars. As their bodies only just squeeze in and their legs stick out, the likeness is all the more remarkable. Spider crabs are pushing ill-mannered walkers. They frequently get into jostling, quarreling mobs. As on land, a fight soon collects a crowd to see what's going on. Attracted by the noise, the Sabella comes out of its cosy mud tube. 
and turns an inquisitive head to see what's happening, but finds the sight too shocking. These dignified creatures that glide with the grace of a dowager duchess and look as if they could never mix with anything as vulgar as vinegar or pepper are whelks. In contrast to their graceful movements, the scallop's progress is very jerky. Indeed, it resembles a bad attack of sneezing. Sometimes, mussels take up permanent lodgings on the scallop's shell, and then it's quite put off its balance and can't get back to normal. Curiously enough, the harmless-looking starfish is one of the scallop's worst enemies. It stalks its prey from behind. And climbs onto its shell. Though at first, the scallop jerks it off the starfish finally prizes a shell open, and the crabs finish what the greedy starfish leaves of a poor scallop. The sea swarms with other murderers, intent on robbery with violence, though some hide their villainy under an expression like the soul's awakening. They lurk under every tuft of seaweed. And the ravenous conger eel darts out from the rocks. Under the sea, it is the same as on land. The worst danger often lurks where it is at least suspected. The sea cucumber looks like a harmless pincushion, but if frightened or pinched, it can produce this firework effect of tough, sticky threads as a protection. Most sea dwellers avoid these threads as they would dry land. But a crab in a hurry knocks against the cucumber and gets entangled. Not looking where he is going, the hermit crab gets caught as well. The lobster comes across this traffic jam and comes in a knocking into the cucumber gets held up too. The lobster and the hermit crab are strong enough to break away eventually. But this little fellow only wears himself out by biting and tearing at his fetters. At last, worn out, he turns over on his back. And with his last kick, there ends another of those traffic fatalities which are forever occurring below the surface of the sea. <laughs>